All right, well, today's project is going to be, it's a Miller, oh, sorry, I take that back. It's a Lincoln High Freak adapter. I think this was built in and around 1960, 1961. It's uh, used to give a high-frequency overlay to standard arc welding, arc welding voltages in order to be able to use TIG on top of a regular arc welder. Uh, I've used this a lot on aluminum. The person before me has used it even more on aluminum um, and was probably the original owner. Um, but what we're going to end up doing today is just getting a survey of the parts that are going to be needed. Um, so some of the goals are down here we've got some capacitors and they're 1960. Another big smoothing capacitor there uh, and down and in here we've got a couple of good old antique sprague paper capacitors that are split down the sides and they're a little corroded on the top there's an open contact relay switch here that is uh, looks like it's succumbing to the elements but the biggest problem is this device here it uses a spark gap there's a spark gap down in there, and the spark gap generates a ton of ozone. And that ton of ozone tends to uh, eat up wires. Let's see if we can get in a little closer on some of these wires. But the insulation is just gone. Um, just from age, more than a few decades of welding and use. Um, I did contact Lincoln, and Lincoln was more than happy to send me a parts listing and a diagram, wiring diagram for this particular model. So what we're going to end up doing is using the wiring diagram. Um, there's a handful of wires inside this poor box that are broken off. They're just kind of floating around. Uh, there's one hanging out there just, yeah, it was attached to something, but it's not anymore. So we'll figure out where all the broken wires go first. Make a list of components I'm going to want to purchase. And uh, we'll go from there. The, the, the fun part about this is it's a 500 amp AC-DC unit. Um, and generally it's in operational condition except for it just needs to be rewired, cleaned up, patch up a few problems with it. But it's really, it's all solidly built. Even though it's, it's getting up there in age. So um, anyway, hopefully next short little video that will be coming down. We'll be going over the parts listings, what I need to replace, um, where I'm going to purchase them, where I'm going to find them. Uh, you may have one of these older units kicking around, and I will say, it works great. Um, but, you know, it's got some age problems, so next one we'll be uh, diving into that. Hopefully get a good cleanup of this. Uh, we're going to readjust our spark gap. Uh, any terminals that look a little dodgy, we're going to be cleaning up and fixing. Uh, certainly these wires, these are cotton jacketed wires, those look fine. The good old ceramic resistors, absolutely bomb proof. As long as they don't get dropped, bounced, or over torqued. Uh, but some of the electronic components are a little bit toasty. Actually this, the elect, not the electronic components, but the passive components. The electronic components, there's a couple of bridge rectifiers in there. Uh, they're working fine, and there's one transistor. It's a general electric point contact transistor. And believe it or not, working just fine. So, anyway, next video we'll be ripping into this and starting with the survey first. And then uh, ordering some replacement parts. So we'll be catching up with you in a little bit. See ya.